Seoul, Tokyo, and Singapore. Each city is unique in their own way. Like which one is the most beautiful, has the best food, and which one has the best prices. We found this and a lot more that we want to share with you so you can determine which city is right for you. Let's start out with one of the most important things. Which one is the most beautiful? Which one has the most things to do? Just like all of that, which one is the best? I personally said that I, well, I think Seoul is the most beautiful city, but I think the most things to do is Singapore, and Jacob actually disagrees with me on that. <laughs> so I do think Seoul is the most beautiful, and I do think there's the most things to do, just because, like, the scenery is a big part of like why I would enjoy a city like we're ranking three big cities here And so when you just see a bunch of buildings like, you know, that's one thing and that can be amazing But also the national park there in Seoul that, that we saw true. every single day That is just when you're out doing activities and you can stare at the national park We didn't even go to the national park. Maybe we should have but yeah, just to. like that, sightseeing is a big part of it for yeah, me. Yeah, but in Singapore, they have the super trees, they have the light show, they have the fountains. Like, I love the activities in Singapore. And Tokyo has Disneyland, so <laughs> that's also kind of like, I don't know, they're all good places to go to. Steam Labs in Tokyo is very, very cool. It is a, it's a really fun experience. I don't know, Tokyo of good things too. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we could just say it. They're all they're, they're all, they're all great. solid. And now on to food. Oh, my the, favorite category. <laughs> we do think that Tokyo would take the number one spot for us. I mean, just we're just dreaming about the ramen and the sushi and just everything oh. else too. Oh, and the onigiri. Oh, everything in Tokyo is so good. <laughs> you could just go to 7-Eleven and have a nice <sighs> meal there. I would literally have a layover in Tokyo just to eat the food there. It's so good. And Singapore, uh, talking about a popular layover city, I mean, Singapore has really solid food too. We ate at Hawker Centers most of the yeah. time we were there and we loved every minute of it. And Hawker Centers are very, very good authentic food because they have such a mixing pot of a bunch of different cultures. They have really good authentic Malay food, Chinese food, and Indian food. So, and it's really cheap. They're all like full meals for like one, two, three dollars in Hawker Center. So you really can't go wrong. Yeah, of course, that. we'll talk about the affordability factor of all three of these cities later on, but I mean, that's a great place to have a meal. Of course, you can go to a restaurant if you want to, but we opted for Hawker Centers most of the time. And Seoul, or South Korea, we put this one third just because I think we aren't super used to that food. Like that was the first time we've ever had like Korean food in our entire lives. And we loved the fried chicken. We loved cast beer and we loved Korean barbecue. Other than that, it was like, of course we liked a meal here and there. Like, of course, like we didn't hate it or anything like that, but it just like, wasn't like what we were used to. And so it was like, it, took a while to be like, oh, actually like, oh, I like this kind of dish and, and whatnot. That's just personal preference, honestly. Transportation. Singapore was amazing. And I think also because it's so small compared to Tokyo and Seoul, but it was so easy to get around. Yeah, um, of course the trains stick out to us most mm -hmm. in Singapore because it was extremely affordable. I mean, talking about like less than $2 to go like all the way across the city. Uh, we're trying to include trains and buses and taxis into this category, but of course we didn't take all three modes of transportation in every city, but I mean, it was just so easy in Singapore, so clean. So clean and you felt so safe, like, mm -hmm. That's such a big thing. Like you felt safe the uh -huh. entire time. And the trains just take you right to where you want to be with the things to do. Like we are talking about with the Marina Bay Sands, the mm -hmm. super trees, like it just takes you right there. And I mean, it's just, it's just so convenient. The one thing that's sad is you can't eat or drink on them. And like, we would always be munching on like onigiri on the ones in Tokyo and on <laughs> Korea. 
maybe we weren't supposed to, but we did it anyway. <laughs> uh, but then Tokyo would, of course, be our number two. Uh, mm -hmm. We thought that the train system, although sometimes a, a little bit complicated and confusing, mm -hmm. like sometimes I, it just took a long time to get. Like you have yeah. to like transfer and then transfer again and then transfer again. Whereas Singapore was mostly just like straight shots most of the time. But then to Tokyo does have like just a massive train system, yeah. and so like it, because the city is so huge and they have like all the different trains that you could want like of course we put that number two and then Seoul unfortunately this was uh, number three just because we found it uh, really difficult to get around at least to like learn the system and then we later learned that if we got like the the t-money yeah. card is that what it was and then just like it would have made it easier but taxis are mm -hmm. so cheap in South Korea it's incredible like you really don't need to figure out like the metro or the bus system and yeah. we realized this like halfway through a trip and it made our lives so much easier because yeah. you just call it on your phone or you call it off the street and it just comes right to you you don't it's just and it's so cheap uh -huh. we might have if we like knew about taxis going in we might have had a better experience with transportation in general in seoul yeah. and so yeah, we definitely would recommend taking taxis over waiting 20 minutes for a bus yeah. and then paying like one or two dollars. It's and like almost going. the same price, It's honestly. like when you're on vacation and you're like going to Seoul, we're just thinking about you, like there's no point, like just pay an extra like five dollars and take a taxi to go to the same place and it'll save you a lot of time. Yeah. While we're talking about money, thought we should bring up a very important thing which is affordability and unfortunately none of these cities are cheap to go to but to our surprise of all the cities that we went to we actually thought that tokyo was the cheapest out of these three which was i thought it was going to be super expensive and it definitely wasn't cheap like thailand or vietnam or anything but it was like decently affordable yeah just eating meals at restaurants I mean, we pay like i don't know like seven dollars a person for yeah. like a substantial meal we would just I mean, yeah go to the 7-eleven and get some food yeah. there like very affordable and then the hotel rooms were also pretty affordable like 80 dollars a night ish other places in in japan like it was more affordable like especially sapporo mm -hmm. uh we went there i guess but uh, out of the three it was the cheapest in tokyo yeah because seoul was also had expensive mm -hmm. hotels and singapore singapore had, was the most expensive hotel singapore oh my goodness. really expensive so we thought tokyo was definitely the cheapest then we thought seoul was the second cheapest and singapore was the third cheapest the good thing about Singapore, even though it's super expensive, is that you can get cheap food there. Is yeah, I definitely just... thought Seoul was going to be cheaper than Tokyo. But it didn't happen like yeah, that. Yeah, strange. We found that like restaurants mm -hmm. and, and the hotels were... I mean, it definitely wasn't like outrageous. Like, I think it's still like a little bit cheaper than the United States. So that's still a win in our book. <laughs> And then something that's in our minds a lot when before we visit these places is uh, like, what is the English proficiency like? Like, how well do they speak our language? And naturally, because English is the language in Singapore. <laughs> Obviously, English was very proficient in Singapore. Everyone spoke English. I remember getting off of the plane. We were coming from Thailand, and this guy from the airport just walked up to me and started talking to me in English and like using slang words. And then I was like whoa i forgot how easy it was to like <laughs> communicate with people like it was like i just remember being like whoa like this place speaks english like it's a very nice place to go like if you don't know any other phrases like when you're going to thailand you might need to learn some thai phrases and things mm -hmm. like that but it's just so nice to know like oh i don't have to like prepare in this area before yeah. going to singapore and then we thought i think tokyo and seoul are pretty equal i would put tokyo just a teeny tiny bit above seoul but i will say a lot of young people in seoul speak english but that kind of leads into another point of like how willing the people are to talk to you i feel like these go hand in hand because even though people speak english a little bit better in tokyo they don't generally want to talk to you that much they just like keep to themselves which is totally fine because that's a part of their culture mm -hmm. there's look i don't want to talk to that many people either <laughs> like i get it i get it we want to talk to you guys you want to yeah. talk to the camera and then you know whatever yeah but... they just going about their day they're going to work i get it when i'm going to work i don't want to talk to anyone either but, but... everyone in south korea is so friendly and 
so willing to talk to you, even though like they don't, a lot of them didn't speak English. They would like gesture to us and like, Mm -hmm. it and, was and when we were having a hard time they were so willing to help us out mm -hmm. like when we talked about how like the buses were yeah they were confusing in, in korea but then there were so many people coming up to us like asking if they could help and like not everyone like spoke perfect english but they were doing the best that they could mm -hmm. to make sure that we got on the correct bus to go to our hotel yeah and then singapore yeah it was really easy there i would say the, did the people really interact with us that much i would say more so that we like we went to a rooftop bar yeah. one time and like the the waiter was extremely oh, so nice so nice he got us free drinks like he was from india we were just talking like two old college friends <laughs> we were just like we just had a really good time in singapore of course i think it made it easier that we spoke the language and yeah. everything like that uh but we did find out that the locals a lot of them were, were pretty nice so overall we would think tokyo has the best food seoul is the most beautiful and singapore is just like the coolest like it just has really <laughs> cool things hopefully this will help guide you to tell you where you should go and which one would be the most enjoyable for you and if you want more content from us, of course, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're posting videos all the time about all the places we go around the world. And you, if you want even more than that, you can sign up for our newsletter. Do it! We just started that. We email about like once a week right to your inbox. And we just appreciate you so, so much for watching this video. And we will see you in the next one.